Well, welcome everybody to On The Run. This is a new uh, segment from Inside Asian Gaming. We're calling it the CEO Vlog. Uh, we're planning to bring this to you uh, weekly if it's popular. Uh, and it's going to be uh, me on the run now that I've left Macau and traveling around Asia, uh, the Asian gaming industry to various locations through Asia Pacific. And um, this has sort of been in response to a couple of stories I've written over the last few months. The August issue uh, cover story of IAG Macau Has Fallen, which I'm sure uh, many of you read. Well, 42,000 people read it anyway. Well, I got 42,000 page views anyway, uh, 32,000 in the English and 10,000 in the Chinese. So we were really happy about that. Um, not so happy about the subject matter, unfortunately. We we hope Macau gets back very, very soon. And also the story I wrote uh, and published on the morning of the 12th of September, uh, after 18 years uh, following Macau, 13 years living in Macau, and 933 days trapped in Macau, it's time to go. And indeed, it was time to go, and I have left Macau. Um, of course, our office remains in Macau. Our team remains in Macau. We're a Macau company, but I'm on the road making up for lost time during COVID. So the plan is for this on the run uh, vlog to be uh, very informal, basically like a conversation, like a chat uh, from me to you. And um, we'd love to hear any feedback you guys have on it and what you'd like to see us do. The plan is to make it a sort of a where, who and what of the last week. So where am I uh, in the Asia Pacific region? Um, who am I meeting up with and what properties am I going to? And what am I seeing at those properties? And what's interesting? And also what have we published over the past week and some, maybe some commentary on some of the articles and some big stories for the week. So, so let's get into it. Um, uh, first thing, travel, where am I? Well, as uh, I speak to you now, which is uh, Thursday, uh, October the 6th, this should be published hopefully on Friday, October the 7th morning, uh, I'm in KL, I'm in uh, Kuala Lumpur, and I have been in Malaysia for quite a long time. Uh, I ended up leaving Macau, not on September the 12th, but on September the 14th. That's another story. Uh, stayed overnight in Singapore and then headed straight up to KL. And I've been in Malaysia ever since. Uh, but I am finally leaving here on the Friday and heading down to Melbourne. Uh, and I'll be there for a little while and then over to the Philippines to get ready for the Power 50 event on November the 4th. Uh, as most of you know, I was stuck in Macau, well, for 935 days as it transpired, uh, nearly three years. And uh, given that I normally am on the road about half the time, I guess that means I owe the APAC uh, gaming industry a year and a half on the road. I guess I won't be on the road for a whole year and a half, certainly be back to Macau in that time. But the plan is to be on the road uh, for many, many, many months. I'm not sure when I'll get back to Macau, but I've got to get to all the various places around Asia. I want to spend a lot of time in the Philippines and Singapore as the two big markets right now. I want to get back to Macau when it's possible. I want to go to lots of cities in Australia, up here in Malaysia, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Korea, over to Japan when it's possible too, and uh, many other places, um, of course, US and UK when, when, when I can get over there. So that's, um, that's the plan. All right, next on the rundown, we should have a rundown here somewhere. Next item on the rundown is, I got COVID. Yes, I got COVID. So as soon as I left Macau, how, how ironic, uh, I flew to um, Singapore one night in Singapore, straight up to KL the next morning. I wasn't even in Singapore 24 hours. Uh, went to the uh, buffet breakfast at the hotel and it was packed with people. And I thought, oh no, I'm going to get COVID. And I did. So I think I got it at the buffet breakfast. Maybe I got it on the flight. Who knows? But I got COVID and I actually had it for a few weeks. It was pretty nasty. And so I've lost uh, two or three weeks or so. So if you have been, if you've been sending me emails and I haven't been getting back to you, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Over the next couple of weeks, I'll be catching up on the backlog. Um, I feel much, much better now. So, uh, and I'm testing negative. I've been testing negative for quite a while now. So I got COVID, I'm over it. 
And yes, uh, you know, it is kind of ironic in Macau all that time. As soon as I left Macau, I got it straight away. But if I had a choice between getting COVID and getting quite sick, which I did, and then recovering and being immune now, probably for maybe six months or so, or, or staying stuck in Macau with no business, I know what I would choose. I'd take the COVID, even though it was pretty nasty. Um, so anyway, yeah, yes, the rumours are true. I got COVID, but I'm over it now. Um, so let's get on to some of the things that uh, IAG's published in the last uh, week or so. So we uh, found out today, actually, that um, Star Entertainment in Sydney has been found uh, unsuitable to uh, run a casino in Queensland on top of their finding of unsuitability in New South Wales. Uh, boy, uh, has Australia been through a lot uh, with Crown, Star, everything that's going on, Crown in Sydney, not being able to open the gaming floor till I think it was at August the 8th. Uh, the appointment of Kieran, of course, to uh, CEO of Crown, but the Australian uh, industry has got a lot to get through. Uh, all these companies found unsuitable and having special managers appointed for a couple of years. It's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens. And basically, I'm calling Australia a greenfield site now. Um, start all over again. A lot of people who are casino executives have not un basically unemployable in Australia now. So we're seeing a lot of bankers and insurance guys get into the industry who may not know the industry so well. So it'd be very, very interesting to see what happens. So we're following that one quite closely at um, IAG. Um, Vietnam locals kind of a flop. We saw uh, that only 5% of revenue at Phuc Quoc, Corona Casino came from uh, Vietnam locals under the locals program. The program's got a lot of requirements, as I think most of you would know. Um, you know, you've got to be able to demonstrate a certain level of income and there's an entry fee and there's a lot of hoops to jump through. So the trial, uh, I think, is proving that the requirements in Vietnam are too stringent. I think if they really do want to have a, a thriving industry there, you've got to have locals. I think that's kind of been proved uh, through various jurisdictions over the years but what they're doing in Vietnam at the moment isn't enough. But it's better than nothing. It's a start. And we now kind of have proof that it's too stringent. So it'll be interesting to see how the Vietnamese government responds, uh, responds to that number. What else uh, has happened? Well, one thing we can say is um, Asia's back. Uh, I went up to, <clears throat> excuse me, went up to Resorts World Genting a few days ago. And boy, was it pumping. I was there at the beginning of the week, even on a Monday morning, it was packed. A lot of players. So that's great to see. And we're hearing that Singapore is packed and the Philippines is packed and everywhere is coming, even Australia. So everywhere is coming back at long last, uh, except Macau, of course. But even Macau's improved um, a bit now post that little well, I won't say hiccup, it was a big hiccup, but uh, it's nowhere near back to previous levels, but it's a little bit better. So, but the rest of Asia is back and I think we're seeing great growth. And I think in not very long at all, we're gonna be fully back to 2019 levels for the rest of Asia and then, and then heading beyond with the expansions that are around. So that's great news, really, really good news. Um, what else on the rundown over here next? Um, we saw uh, Newport World Resorts, got to get the name right, no longer uh, Resorts World Manila, uh, with the uh, demise of, uh, of Resorts World Hong Kong. Uh, but Newport World Resorts launched uh, their Epic Player Card, New Player Rewards uh, system. So good luck to them. Good luck to uh, to uh, Kingston Sian over there and to Hark and Dagtas. And um, I'm really looking forward to getting over to the Philippines pretty soon, won't be long now. And I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in the Philippines over the uh, upcoming months and year. I think it's a great market and expanding market and it's time my AG focused more on the Philippines. Uh, what else have we seen? Alvin Chow, of course, in court uh, in Macau. I uh, won't say too much about that while the court case is going on, but it's been very interesting to follow and to hear what some of the um, Sun City people have been saying. Uh, and um, it'll be interesting to see ultimately what Mr. Chow's fate is uh, in the industry. And perhaps we we'll have to say a little bit more to say about that after, after the result. Um, Genting in Macau. Wow, that's the next one on the rundown here. Uh, yes, we saw on the 14th of September, uh, we all knew there were going to be at least six bidders. 
the existing six concessionaires in Macau, but we ended up with a seventh, uh, MGG, which of course transpired to be a subsidiary of Genting Malaysia. And uh, I've just been up to Resorts World Genting, visiting the guys up there. Very interesting, uh, won't say too much, but uh, very, very interesting to see what happens and the negotiations that will occur. And if nothing else, it will give the Macau government some leverage in their negotiations with the other six concessionaires, uh, some of which are probably more likely to uh, be renewed, so to speak. Of course, it's not a renewal, it's a new concession. And some of which are maybe less likely, but of course, you know, the, all the commentariat are basically saying that probably it'll be the same six. It's good to see some competition in the in the race, and I think Genting are to be commended for uh, putting a bid in. Um, whether it's successful or not, well, let's see. But they do have the advantage of not being American in the current geopolitical climate. Uh, they have the advantage of an ethnically Chinese background. They have the advantage of being an Asian operator. They have an advantage of being quite global with the glaring exception of Macau, which they're trying to, to um, rectify. And um, it will be interesting to see what happens. Of course, the biggest problem is reversion. And uh, how would that work if one of the existing operators was not to uh, receive a concession and they had all the non-gaming around the island of the casino in the middle and Genting had that. Obviously, Genting would have to find a way to acquire um, acquire or lease or there have to be some arrangement so that one company ran it all. I think that's always been the Macau model and it would be quite difficult uh, to, to have two separate companies, one with the gaming and one with the non-gaming. Not that it hasn't been done elsewhere in the world, but I don't think it'll work in Macau. So, you know, could the government step in to broker a deal between the two? I think that would be the only way it could happen. Uh, finally, just like to the last one on the rundown here is mentioned that MAD 13 at long last is on uh, 18th of October at Macau Tower. We nearly had it back in June, I think it was. And then at the last minute, pandemic reasons we had to uh, we had to postpone we postponed it four months in the end or nearly four months but it'll be great to start up mad again uh, so it'll be fantastic if you can make it along to Macau Tower our friends there thank uh, thank you to the guys at Macau Tower for being uh, patient with us and it's a great venue uh, and uh, Jason will be there and James will be there I will not be there because I will be here on the run, and uh, but I maybe might uh, zoom into a few people or leave, do a video or something like that. But just because I'm not there, there's no reason to go. Maybe it's more of a reason to go. So I hope you enjoy yourself at MAD13. If you have received an invitation, of course, it's an invite-only event. And any questions about that, please uh, speak to Jason or Carolyn. Well, that brings us to the end of the first uh, on the run. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to keep you posted with where I am, who I'm meeting, what properties I'm going to, my impressions on those properties, uh, my chats with suppliers and also um, uh, consultants and lawyers and all the people in the industry. And um, if I'm coming to your place soon, please get in touch. And I would love to see you. I've got to make up for a lot of lost travel over the last few years. And as I say, down to Australia on the weekend, and I'll be in a few different cities in Australia and then over to the Philippines pretty shortly thereafter for Power 50. Hope to see you in Power 50 if you can make it to the Philippines. And that's it for On The Run for this week. And we'll see you next time. All right, have a great week and see you next Friday. Bye for now. See you later. Run.